Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today I want to share with you some of the things that I learned when I engineered the bullseye leak detection system. Now I know how hard leaks can be to find in a shop. I owned a shop for 27 years and I know the difficulty that some of these leaks can give your shop. What I want to show you is some of the things that I just didn't used to know when I owned my shop. But you need to know now so your leak finding will be successful this spring. So let's take a look at that now. Okay guys, what we have is we have a 5 thousandths hole, a 15 thousandths, and a 30 thousandths. Now all of these holes are larger than this because that's the size of the drill bit and these are hand drilled. So all these holes are larger than what's here. But when you look at a car and it gives you a 20 thousandths leak, you're really looking, the computers are looking for 15, and a 40 thousandths leak, you're really looking for, for 30. This is due to the bell curve. So what I want to show you is if we're looking for an EVAP leak, what do we really got to do to find that leak? Now we can see that we've adjusted the regulator and we're at 25 inches of water, which is the right amount. We're going to go ahead and let this run up. So we can see that we got a leak and it is leaking. Now, the first gas that we're going to use is CO2. Now, a lot of people have said that this product works very well, mechanics that I know. So we're going to first check this. Okay guys, look at that. The only leak that I can find is a 5 thousandths leak. I can't find the 15 or the 30. Is that crazy or what? And the 5 isn't the one you need to find in an EVAP system, and that's not true. You really do need to find the 5s too. But I want to show you that with these leak sites, you can't find the sizes you're mainly looking at, which is a 20 and a 40 doesn't even work. You can only find the five. So you, we need to know this stuff so we're successful in our leak finding. Okay, so I'm going to go wash this bottle off and clean it so there's nothing on it. We don't want to we don't want to say that because we mixed surfactants that it, Okay guys, I've completely rinsed this so there's no surfactant left. Now what I want to try is the next. This is Cal Blue. This is another product that I've had a lot of technicians say that works really good. We can see that we have the same pressure, 25 inches of water. We can see we got a leak, which we know we got leaks here. Now we're going to do the same test. And look at that. Once again, I can find the five thousandths, but I can't find the 15 and the 30. Is that just crazy, guys, or what? When I saw this, when I was engineering these products, I freaked. And all of a sudden, I realized why I was struggling to find these leaks. Let me wash this bottle up again. Okay, guys, what we've seen right now are these are Goldilocks products and I can't fix cars with Goldilocks. If it's just the right size leak, it'll show it. So that's why I made the bullseye. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this again. Okay, we basically got 25 inches of water. We're going to open it and it's going to show we have a leak. Same pressure, no change on the regulator, but now I'm going to make my use our, our foam. Now first you can see that it's foam and it doesn't just run down, it stays over the hole and we can see it changing color. But now I can see three distinct leaks by color change and bubbles. Where before the leak sites were looking for I couldn't even find, now at least I can find the leak. That's the difference guys, right there. That's engineered for automotive applications and it absolutely works. So I'm going to wipe this off, do that test real quick again. 
open the valve up we're going to cover the area where we are we can see we have a leak here see a leak here I can see I've got a color change over the five Now it's not a Goldilocks anymore, guys. I can see all three leaks clearly. That's the difference between having something that's made for the automotive industry specifically. Okay, guys, I've changed in nitrogen because that's the other gas that people are going to use. We can see we're adjusted to 25 inches of water. And we're going to have a leak because we know we have a leak, so the gauge isn't going to come all the way up. We're going to do the same test though. We're first going to try the leak bubbles yellow. And basically the only leak I have is on the 5000s again, Goldilocks. This is totally a Goldilocks. Okay, so I need to go wash the bottle so I don't have any surfactant on it. So we, we don't have, we want to control our variables very accurately. Okay, so we've got the gauge set at 25 inches of water, which is the only thing that's really acceptable on EVAP. You can't put more than 25 inches of water in. You're allowed one pound. Now we're going to try the cow blue again. And again, we can see five thousandths is the only leak I find. I don't find the 15 and the 30. Okay, this is Goldilocks all again. So let me go and wash the bottle off again, and let's try the bullseye. Okay, guys, we're going to use nitrogen. We're at 25 inches of water, same pressure. And I can see that I'm blowing a 30 and a 15, so I'm seeing the bubble sizes that I need to find my leak on. And I've also got five blowing bubbles. So okay, the bullseye, even with, even that it doesn't have a color change, the bullseye shows me all the leaks. But guys, I'm telling you, you need the color change, so if it doesn't blow bubbles, it will change the color and you know that the leak is there. That's why I invented this substance. Okay, I want to do some air conditioning testing. This is a 28 gram per year leak that's certified, and I'm at 200 pounds of pressure, and this is CO2. And we definitely have a leak. Definitely can see it's leaking. Now I want to take some bullseye. And this is a really little leak, so it's going to take just a little bit of time for it to show or for it to change that color. and it's starting to change color in the capillary here we can see that the color change is changing to yellow we can see down here it's more pinkish so we definitely got which definitely changed the color indicating that that's a leak so the bullseye foam can definitely identify an air conditioning leak 
Okay, I've changed the fitting out. Let's make sure it's leaking. Definitely is leaking. First, we'll chuck the yellow. There's no bubbles. I can see the foam and it's yellow, but there's no bubble in it. It's just liquid surfactant that's in that fitting and we can see that it's yellow, but I see no bubbles at all. So there's so little volume coming out that it can't build pressure under the surfactant to blow a bubble. That's what happens with these little tiny leaks. So that particular surfactant is not going to find the leak. For sure I can see the surfactants in the tip with no bubbles. Let me change the tip out again. Let me put another, another fitting in here. Okay, so I changed the fitting with a new fitting. And the reason I'm changing these fittings is once I've, I put surfactant or foam on these, I can't be positive, I can't be positive that you have the same flow out of them. So I'm changing them so I can control the variables. So we definitely got a leak. So now I'm going to take the cow blue. Okay, I definitely got it in there. I see no bubbles at all. The foam is in there. You can see the surfactant in there, but there's no bubbles. And again, you have to have enough volume coming out in order to make a bubble, to have a pressure gain under the surfactant where a bubble blows. If you have really, really small amounts coming out, you're not going to blow a bubble. No bubbles. So neither of the surfactants show an air conditioning leak at 200 pounds of pressure. And be very aware, 200 pounds of pressure is as much as you should be putting in any air conditioning system. I've worked with several of the OEs and 200 pounds is it. They're worried that if you put more than 200 pounds in there, you'll damage the EVAP core. And it will leak after you're done or during when you're, you can actually make a leak. Testing for a leak, you can make a leak. So 200 pounds is as much as you can have in a system. I have 200 pounds charged in this system right now, as we can see. Okay guys, is that just some crazy stuff or what? When I started to engineer this leak detection project and I saw how all the rest of the leak systems were failing, I had to figure ways to get around all these. And I was just amazed on what I was finding and how some of these things that are on the market for us to find leaks just don't really work. When you're actually testing them against calibrated leaks and the pressure you can use within that system. It's pretty amazing and I hope that this is going to help you with your leak season this spring. I only wished I would have known this when I had my shop. I would have made way, way more money if I'd have just understood why I wasn't finding some of the leaks with some of the systems. Thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it. You guys have a great leak season now.